tips. I'm gonna go through this lesson for 5.06 relatively quickly, knowing that this is a video, so you can always pause, rewind, re-listen. So if I go quick, you can always back up a little bit. Now, when it comes to comparing equations, uh, graph characteristics and table characteristics for linear and versus exponential functions, obviously you know that your linear functions, forgive me, are gonna have that f of x equals mx plus b, where you have your rate of change that is based on either addition or subtraction, and then you're going to have an exponential. Those are based on, you have that starting amount, but then you have a multiplier of some sort. You're either multiplying by a number that's between 0 and 1 if you're decreasing or decaying, and greater than 1 if you're increasing. Um, you're going to have a linear graph. Remember that Linear functions are pretty easy to identify. They have that constant rate of change, those lines, whereas exponentials, they're curved. Their graphs are curved. So you're going to see an increase or a decreasing function. They tend to level out as you go to the left and to the right. And finally, as far as on a table, a table you're looking for that common difference on a linear. All right, so again, looking for addition and subtraction, all right? Looking for addition or subtraction, whereas with exponentials, we have a common ratio. And everything is based upon multiplication or division. Again, we always call it a multiplier, so instead of saying we're dividing by two, we'd say we're multiplying by one half. All right, first example. So we give it, we're given a function and what we're going to be doing today is trying to define certain characteristics about this function. So we expect you guys to pick, uh, figure out what your starting amount is. We know that that's given to you right there in an exponential function. So we know our starting value amount is 1. All right. Now you might want to say, okay, well then I know that my table, when it comes to our, our table x and f of x, that I now know it's going to have the point 0, 1. I know that that's my starting value. You could even throw that on the graph real quick if you wanted to. Now, what's my multiplier? I'm multiplying by 2. So we know that if I multiply by 2, things are growing. So we want to circle growth. And we can figure out that our pattern here on our table is that it's going to be going up by 2 every time. So if I go forwards, so I go 0, 1, 2, that means I am multiplying by 2. My pattern is to multiply by 2 every time. That's why we know that multiplier up there was 2. So that I know that when I put 1 in, I'm going to get 2, because 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. I can go ahead and plot those points. 1, 2, and 2, 4. Now, if I go the opposite direction, so I have 0, 1, 2 on my table, what if I want negative 1 and negative 2? What am I going to get when I put those in? Well, I could go up to my function and actually substitute those values in. That wouldn't be that terribly hard to put those values in for x right there. But I could just go backwards. So instead of multiplying by 2, divide by 2. So I'd have my value of 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. And 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. So I could plot those points again. Negative 1, 1 half. Negative 2, 1 fourth. And then we can sketch our graph. So we know that this thing is going up as we go to the right. And it's going to plateau here as we go to the left. All right. So that's kind of what we're looking for, is that you can look at a function and you can tell all that the interesting information, the graph, the table, and then some important things like growth versus decay. Okay, here's another exponential function. If you'd like, you might want to pause and give it a shot, and then you can start the video and check your answers. So again, I know its starting amount is 6, so I can plot the point 0, 6. I can put that on my table. I know that this is going to be x and f of x, and I know in the middle here I'm going to have the point 0, 6. All right? Now, what is my multiplier? I'm multiplying by 1 half. If I multiply by 1 half, that's going to make things smaller. So that's going to be decay. And we can go ahead and we can fill in. If I know I'm multiplying by 1 half, we can fill in our table for the values 1 and 2 by simply multiplying by that 1 half. So I'd add 3, and 3 times 1 half 
is three halves, or one and a half. It all depends on what you want, right? So we can go ahead and plot those points. One, three, and two, one and a half, right there. All right. Now, if I want to go the other direction, say I wanted to say, you know what, what happens if I put negative one or negative two? Well, if I go the opposite direction on my table, I just have to do the opposite of multiplying by one half, which is to divide by one half. Now, hopefully, this might be a little bit uh, confusing for some. Dividing by one half, remember how we divide by a fraction. If we divide by one half, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal of two over one. So going backwards, we're essentially multiplying by two. So two times six is 12, whoops, get that in red. And 12 times two is 24. Again, six divided by one half is the same as six times two, all right? Now, plotting those points. Might be get a little difficult because we're gonna start getting to the edge of our graph there. Negative one, 12, you can see it's already up here off the graph. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's gonna be way up here already, so we really can't go any farther. So as we go to draw this graph, and we know it's going up, 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 up as we go to the left. So now you see this decay. See how we're going down as we go from left to right. So that's where we're seeing that decay in our graph versus the last problem where we had growth.